Aloha, everybody. Friday was not the greatest session for the overall stock market as we definitely saw a distribution day across the board. Uh, the good news is, is that the stock indexes that are holding up the best are the ones that you want to see hold up. So that's kind of comforting. But overall, you know, things aren't looking that great. Um, RSI, Stochastics, TSV looking a little bit lame, but MACD, all of them still looking okay on the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100. The TSV is hinting, though, that things are not good as it's still... It was trying to trend higher just recently, but in two days, it's now looking like it is overall trending lower. I mean, you got lower highs throughout this whole way, but, you know, short term, it's kind of trending up too. So it's a mixed bag, but overall, NASDAQ, NASDAQ 100 still trending higher. The Russell 2000, while it's not above the 50-day moving average, it held the early week lows of Tuesday, Wednesday overall. So that's very good to see for me. And while it's TSV is looking a little weak, MACD stochastics looking still strong, nowhere near overbought. RSA, RSI not great, but overall not bad either. So the Russell 2000 held in quite nicely today. So that's good. NASDAQ, Russell 2000 is good. S&P 500 even, not too bad. It's still holding above the 50-day moving average. But if you look at TSV, it's starting to downtrend again. It broke through that recent support that it was trying to make there. And RSI is kind of rolling over. And as you can see, we've got another pocket pivot point sell signal with that blue line jumping there. And stochastics are in the overbought territory. So big caps don't look as good. And big caps could easily weigh on the rest of the market. The Dow Jones Industrial Average it intraday broke through its Tuesday low of day. That is not good. It closed below the 50-day moving average. TSV is rolling over, and RSI looks like it's trying to re-roll over. And stochastic, same thing from overbought levels. So Dow Jones Industrial Average doesn't look good, and that's not surprising considering what the Dow Jones Transportation Average is already doing. Dow Theory says they both need to confirm. So if the Dow Jones Industrial Average rolls over, that'll be a confirmation of the DJT, which is hitting a new 2015 low following Friday's session, and it did so on heavy volume. Still isn't ugly yet, but it's not pretty either. And then the NYSE also took out those intraday lows of Tuesday, heavier volume move below the 50-day moving average. It too looks like it's rolling over with TSV and RSI confirming pocket pivot point sell signal on the NYSE. Now, besides that, this week overall, while it was choppy and we got sent out of some stocks, most of them came back anyway. And once again, my ad, I had a recent ad signal in FCB. I got chopped out of it intraday whenever it went, the ad's final cut loss is 2840. You can see it went through 2840 and what happened? It rallied all the way back to basically where it opened. Now, I will put sell stops back on the books on this one. For me, it's got to close above the intraday high. So at 28.99, I'll get back long this stock. And a recent stock that I just did that on, and actually it didn't work out. My brain is drawing a blank because I didn't write it down. So let's forget about it. But also SPLK, another shakeout, unbelievable. I it wouldn't have mattered. Like even if I would have used 66.22, the low of the session before earnings. It still would have got me, but what I did is on the, so this right here, that move on the 27th knocked me out because my final sell stop was below the um, 518 low a day. I put it back on ahead of earnings immediately. It looked like a great play as everything was working out. But on the next day, it once again, I used this as the new low point, 6670. Got out at 66.69, and of course, it reversed back higher. So on an end-of-day basis, there is not a sell signal there, but SPLK has screwed me again. While the stock has moved 3% overall since I went long this stock back here in May, overall the positions I've lost 10% on, so I'm done with SPLK. And on an end-of-day basis, KIRK failed closing below this low of day, which was the final sell stop, 26.37. I obviously have already been taken out of it, so there's nothing for me to do. And also, Heli, I got knocked out of. I'm still looking to possibly get back into it, but it's not looking that great. And Tile, I recently um, got half the position knocked out of, and that seems to have been prudent because it's not acting that great. And that's another thing. Recent earnings winners, they're just not as explosive as they once were. 
uh, negative sign for this market. But it isn't all that bad. I mean, you can still see, look at CNC, another big, another perfect speculator scan stock that gave us a full sell signal back here in late April, early May. And boom, it's come all the way back. So quite amazing overall. SUP and our long-term winner, we just got a new long signal and an ad signal in it, and it worked immediately. Remember, our long-term position's back here, and we got a 52% gain now since February. TRCH was a stock I was saying to watch closely, and today it made a big move, 25%. ABCD is a stock I passed on back here, but one of our chat room members, Michelle, went long it, and she is now up 26% on the position. And ZHNE, another stock we've been watching, broke out today. She also is long this one. Uh, I have missed it, but that one was up 6% today. Overall, very, very impressive. Now, with all that, we got a lot of signals tonight. Some signals I'm not taking. C-O-K-A, C-O-K-E, excuse me. IMAX, L-D-R-H, remember that one? We were once long this stock, and that look at it come back. Technically, this one is would be a long signal. Uh, I'm going to probably regret not getting long this stock. Uh... I'm going to probably regret not getting along this stock. That's all I know. But LDRH, um, giving another one. ATRA, speculative nature. GMK, also another signal. And ATML, another signal. But the stocks I'm going to take, UTHR is a canceling quality stock, a perfect speculator quality stock, perfect speculator scan quality stock. It was also in my new 52-week high scan, it was also in my price volume bop surge scan, and it was also in my, how could it have been the 52-week high scan? That cannot possibly be right, so I must be wrong with that one. But it was also in another high price stock scan, so this one was confirmed in multiple, multiple scans. New 52-week high, yeah, definitely not that scam, my bad. But the bottom line is it was confirmed in price volume bop surge, high price, Perfect speculator and canceling quality, but UTHR still is only going to be 2.5% because end of the month, a lot of end of month possible positioning. I don't know if this is a legit signal or not, but in this market, they've been working, so i got to take them. Also, DRI, canceling quality stock, new long signal. Uh, third pocket pivot point buy signal in a row. Very strong day, surge and bop, price volume, very good. We have very limited risk, a move below this level right here, 63.80, and we know we are wrong. DRI, also 2.5%, despite the additional confirmations, like I said. End of the month move, mixed market, choppy market, don't really want to be a hero here. And then another old long that has come back once again, like all of them, like EPAM. AVGO has chopped me out of half of it, and now it's higher. You know, So they all come back, and OGS is another one. A back-to-back -back pocket pivot point buy signal, a surge and bop to the green level, very strong volume, and a significant price breakout overall. You don't risk much if we're wrong. You sell half of it if it moves below the low day of Friday, and then the last of it if it goes below 43.17. But it looks like it wants to continue to break out. X can slim quality stock, so it was still my can slim quality stock, which I've now updated this weekend to the... It's been like four months old, and now it's brand, brand new. So this one wouldn't show up again. It would only show up in price, volume, bop. And with the surge in volume, obviously, it's in the price, volume, bop, surge scam. So this is only going to be a 2% position. Technically, it would be one, right? Right. But you know what? It's high quality. I know that I used to have it before, so it gives an automatic one more percent. So 2% for OGS, 2.5 DRI, 2.5 for UTH, and then TTMI, speculative position, but probably the best looking signal of the night. It's got some, do I still have my charts up? No, I shut it down. Darn, thought my market Smith scan was still up. But TTMI has got some huge earnings estimates for 2015-16. Sales and earnings growth has already started to pick up. Things look good for TTMI. This is a beautiful technical pattern. A little risky overall, but just based on the way it's trading and its average true range compared to before. But still... If it moves below 958, we know we're wrong. So once again, we risk less than 5% to know that we're wrong on a speculative position that could potentially give a huge reward, especially if we do a measured move from its 2014 low of 5 to 9. So it could possibly double again. Of course, that's what I'm always looking for with these low price stocks whenever I decide to take them.